Hi, Mark from Skywagon University doing another video on a non-Skywagon. But it doesn't matter because we're going to do a lot of different planes and all the different planes if we can. This is a 1975, sorry, 1976 Mall, Mool, Mowley, Mall. I'm not sure how you pronounce it correctly, but I say Mall. Um, MX5 C, MX5 210 C. So it's an MX5, the 210 is the horsepower. It's an IO360 Continental. So it's a six cylinder. So these can come, malls, there are MX, uh, there are fives, there are sevens, there are, there, are all, there are a lot of different models. The five is sort of the middle one. And it's, uh, it's sort of, it's, there are 180 horsepower, there are nose wheel versions, there are 235 horsepower, like combing powered ones. This is a six cylinder Continental 210 horsepower one. So it's the same engine that's in an Isham conversion Hawk XP, so 2800 RPM. 210 horsepower, cruise at 2400 RPM. Um, fuel injection's nice, no carb heat. Uh, and the MX-5, I think I'm right in saying that it's slightly shorter wings than the MX-7s. Okay, so inside it, very conventional. It's two doors, two seats, side by side. There's two back seats in the back. We'll show you that later because it's got four doors. Yokes, conventional, manual flaps, two stages, one, two and it says take off on one landing on two and the trim is just a little trim wheel right here with a neutral in the middle just like on a any other plane kind of a nice layout I like the way the dash sort of sticks out here on the side you got everything here there's mags master switches throttle prop and mixture in the middle a nice center stack three GPS's for some reason um, there's a V brace in it but it isn't because it's got a float kit most malls can be put on floats. It's just part of the structure of the plane because it is a tube and fabric plane. So that's part of its tubes. Um, rudder pedals with brakes on both sides. It'd be actually quite a good plane to get checked out in in tailwheel. So pretty conventional inside. You know, uh, the seats have a little bit of adjustment, not a lot. They sort of, they sort of arch over themselves like this. There's a bit of room in it and then in the back. And then we'll go and have a look around on the outside. That seat, since we're in here, is a sling seat. It's hanging on a sling frame. It's very easily removed, which giving you a massive baggage area. Easily seen through that back door when we come around the other side. So the fuselage, basically from the, from the firewall back, is fabric. The, the cowling is fiberglass, top and bottom. But this is like a super cub. So it's metal tubes, fabric, fabric, control surfaces, vertical fin, even the elevator, rudder, all fabric covered. This is metal, metal, trim tabs. That kind of isn't a trim tab. You'd think that would be rudder trim, but I'll show you what that does. So keep watching that and I will move the ailerons. So this is aileron motion. You can see the ailerons moving. Look at the rudder trim. So what that does, it's basically a yaw damper. It just gives you a nice coordinated turn. On a short couple plane, nice feature. Um, so as we walk around it, conventional flaps I showed you inside with the lever, moving, lever moving up and down. They're like a cub, they can blow in the wind. So if this is parked with the wind from behind, those can blow. So park them in a hangar or into wind because they're just on a cable, conventional ailerons, the fuel tanks, since we're here, one here, one over here on each side, that is a tip tank. It basically pumps fuel from there into there once you've created enough gap in there, having flown the plane. So burn for an hour, transfer that into the main, two hours into the flight, you've got full mains and your tips are empty. So it's, you don't burn to the engine from the tip. Big old stall drooping wing tips, a little bit of a cuffed leading edge, stall. These planes are very good stall planes. And VGs have been put on this one just to help it out a bit. Um, that keeps the boundary layer of the airflow, it keeps little vortices over the top of the wing at low airspeed, keeps your aileron authority, keeps the boundary layer on top of the wing, allowing it to fly very slowly. And then coming forward, <clears throat> fiberglass cowl, long because it's an IO360 like we were talking about, constant speed prop. So 
just like a basically basically the front end is a Hawk XP, Mooney 231, Seneca, various other applications. Conventional gear with bungees, 800 tires. They're great bush planes. They're sort of somewhere between a Cub and a, and a Cub and a 180, four seats. And then we're going to turn it around so the light's better on it and show you how all the door configurations work because there's a lot of doors. There's that one on the front for the pilot, three on the other side. So mall doors, uh, one on the other side for the pilot, and he needs one. She, they need one. Front door for the right side. Back door, family and kids. And then another door. Look at the size of that. And if you flew this plane as a two-seater up front, all this just comes out. It's a sling seat, and it comes out, and then you've got a massive area there for camping gear and whatever you want to haul in it. So there's not a lot of doors. That's reality again. There's not a lot of planes that have four doors, admittedly three on one side. A 206 has double doors on the right, but it doesn't have a front door. So these are very useful. I mean, it's kind of like having a 180 for under 100 grand that does the job of a small 206. So if you've got a hanger, because it's fabric, remember this is all metal up here. This is all metal, 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 so that's okay. But the fuselage, you've got to keep a fabric plane in a hanger. They're excellent utility. And then you just close them up and head for the dry lakes. Okay, starting now. So I've turned on the radios already, just because the microphone doesn't work unless the uh, master switch is on. So to start it, it's hot already because we ran it. So I'm just going to put on the master, a little bit of boost, fuel flow, off, mixture out, hope it's enough, crank, Clear. Mixture in, throttle out. Oil pressure's good. Oil temperature's coming up. Fuel is good. Left tank. Good. So very conventional tailwheel. It's got direct mechanical steering to the tailwheel. So that's just moving it. Uh, that's moving it with the rudder pedals, just literally steering the tailwheel. And for anything more drastic than that, you just add a bit of brake. So this isn't a road. You see this on a lot of the videos. It's not. It is a road. It's an access road to where the hangars would be if they'd been built and they haven't been built. So it's just a disused road that dead ends, but it's quite scenic for taking pictures and doing videos so there's not a lot of clutter in the background so we're not actually landing on roads although that might be fun oh. there's a fire truck in the way a lot of rain last night and a lot of rain forecast so they're probably just practicing for something up here because this is where the fire base was during the Caldor fire. This whole airport was a heli base. The usual run up. Cigar. Controls, instruments, gas, attitude, run up. Controls. Instruments, 2550. Tail dragger, a bit high. Gas. Left. Burning left. Attitude. Run up. So the run up would be like 16, 1700 RPM. Cycle the prop twice because it's cold. -ish. One stage for takeoff. Lights. Mixture. Plasma traffic, mole 351, X-ray, departing runway 23, a local flight, plasma. Final is clear.
250 for takeoff. That's 210 horsepower. So after takeoff, wind it back to 24. Powerful pressure was already almost where I wanted it at 24. day today. We've got a lot of rain coming in this week. We weren't going to be able to do any videos after this for a few days. Placerville, 51 X-rays, left crosswind, 23 at Placerville. We were doing about 115 knots. We're at 24 squared. We're burning 10 gallons an hour. One X-ray, left hand with two, three at Placerville. See the Sierras out there, and some of the trees, the deciduous trees, are already changing. This world are we late October now? There's the airport. About the same performance as a, uh, it's not quite a 182, but a lot more than a 172, and it's burning like just over 172 fuel burns, which is like seven or eight gallons an hour in the IO360 when it's backed off. Placerville, uh, 51 X ray, left base, 2 3, full stop, Placerville. Right, manifold pressure's coming down, fuel flow's down. But too soon on the prop. Placerville, 51 X ray, final, 2 3, Placerville. Rancho Marietta, uh, Warrior 41785, downwind, Rancho. I was actually, I haven't flown these much, I, that was actually a bit fast. But better than slow. So, <clears throat> as you can see from the weather here, winter's finally come. We had sun and we had a lot of heat and we had a lot of drought and we had a lot of fires and it was 100 degrees and then literally last week we had winter and today it's 44 degrees. Anyway, this is Mark from Skywagons. University signing off again on this small M5 210C and I'd like to be able to just put my foot up on the tire like that every now and then on a tail dragger which I couldn't do on that Unicorn 180 because it was a 35 inch tire. If you like the channel subscribe on the little link below there's a bell there for getting notifications and um, something I wanted to ask is if anybody who can be bothered to fly a plane to me for here by pre-schedule it Bring an interesting plane to me and we'll do an owner interviewed YouTube video because in the end I'm going to run out of planes to talk about. But if somebody's got an interesting plane, any kind, and they know about it enough for me to interview, we can fly it with you, video it, put it on YouTube. So please get in touch and thanks very much for watching.